Today, I'm going to show you how to turn this white ceramic tile into a grayscale photo using a diode laser engraver. I'll quickly walk you through each step of the process and show you how to figure out the proper speed and power settings for your laser machine. In the end, I'll talk about the science behind the process and I'll discuss some of the things that can go wrong while engraving tile. Hello guys and welcome back to Melopine Laser. Here is the TLDR version. You get a white ceramic tile, clean it thoroughly with some acetone or lacquer thinner, apply a coat of white paint and run a power scale test to figure out the correct speed and power settings. The speed and power settings can vary based on the laser, the paint and the tile. Once you are done, rub it thoroughly with some acetone or lacquer thinner to remove the excess paint and you will get a permanently etched white tile. Here are the settings I used on the 20 watt machine, it's 4000 mm per minute at 60% power, on the 10 watt laser, it's 2400 mm per minute at 90% power, and on the 5 watt one, it's 500 mm per minute at 80% power. For engraving tile on a diode laser, you need to get four things right cleaning the tile, the design, the medium, and finally the proper speed and power. First step is to clean the tile thoroughly. You can use lacquer thinner and a rag to give it a nice rub to remove any film on top of a good old rub. <laughs> Boy. Make sure it's really clean, this is important. You can also use acetone. Step 2 is painting the tile. Engraving the tile directly under a laser will damage the top surface. So what we do here is etch the tile. And for that, the best option is to use white paint. I tried engraving with black, but the results weren't as good as what I got with white. If you want to know why we use white paint, I'll explain that later in the video. You can use most white spray paints or use a roller or brush to give it a coat of regular white paint. The goal here is to give it a nice even coat, so using spray paint or an airbrush will make your job easier. If you're using spray paint, Start spraying outside the tile and work your way side to side and top to bottom. This will help you get an even coat. Do not start from the middle. If you are using a roller or brush, make sure the coat is even and there are no gaps. Once you have your tile painted, let it dry naturally. You can also leave it overnight if you have the time. You can also use a hot air gun to make it dry cute, but try to avoid it if possible. Before we move on, there is another method of engraving tile that lets you create color engravings. I'll post a video about it pretty soon, so if you guys haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time to hit that subscribe button. The third step is figuring out the right speed and power. This is a tricky bit and if you want to use the settings used by someone else, it might not always work for you. There are three factors that can affect the power and speed settings. The type of tile, the paint and your machine. If any one of these factors changes, the result can change. I will explain this in detail later in the video. So to figure out the right speed and power, you need to run a power scale test. I have made a video on how to make the test file on Lightburn. You can check that out or you can download the test file in the description. If you are using a 20 watt laser, test it between 50 to 100 percent power and 3000 to 8000 mm per minute speed. If you are using a 10 watt one, test it between 50 to 100 percent power and 1000 to 5000 mm per minute speed. If it's a 5 watt one, do it between 15 to 100 percent power and 250 to 1250 mm per minute. After you run the test file, clean the excess paint off using some lacquer thinner and look for the best engraving. If you have several boxes with good engraving, go for the one that has the highest speed. Now, once you have that figured out, you can engrave a grayscale test image. This is optional, but it will help you dial in that perfect speed and power. You can use a black to white gradient image from the internet or make one yourself. If your engraving is not dark enough, do not lower the speed, instead increase the power. You can also make a secondary power scale around the number you got in the first test to get a better setting. Now, let's talk about making the design. You should pick photos with good contrast and try to avoid photos with dark backgrounds. You can use any software to create a grayscale image of your photo. I will show you two methods. First is to upload the photo to the Image R website. Here you can set the size of your photo and the DPI. Go with 254 for 0.1 mm line spacing or 10 lines per mm. 
272 if you want 0.09 mm line spacing. I did all of the engravings shown on this video at 254 dpi and they came out pretty good. Also, never set the line spacing lower than the spot size of your laser. Once you have done that, you can tweak the image using the options they have or else you can proceed and select the material. Here, you want to select the Norton white tile method. You can check the preview and then download the image. Once you download the image, you can import it into Lightburn or Laser Global. If you are using Lightburn, go to the layer properties and turn on pass through mode. As you have done all the processing on ImageR, you do not want to process it again. With this option turned on, Lightburn will engrave the image as it is. Also, do not resize the image on Lightburn. This can affect the resolution of the image. Similarly, if you are using Laser Gerber, you should turn on the pass through option here as well. The second method is to import the image directly into Lightburn or Laser Gerber and process it. You can use the Stucky or Jarvis mode and for line spacing you can use 0.1mm or 10 lines per mm. You can use tighter resolution if your laser has a smaller spot size. I engrave at 0.1mm and it has good detail. If you go for higher resolution it will take longer to finish the engraving. After that's done, enter the power and speed you found. Set the tile on your workbed, focus the laser and engrave it. You can also engrave text or designs with a single color to make signboards or art. All you need to do is select the threshold mode and use the power and speed of the best engraving you got from the test pattern. After the engraving is complete, you can remove the excess paint using rag and black or thinner and you'll have a permanently edged tile. You can scratch it all you want, this thing will stay. You can use this method for making coasters or cool designs for garden tiles or engrave photos. Now, on to how laser engraving ceramic tile works. First of all, the proper term for this process is etching. Engraving is when you remove material from the top surface. If you do that on a ceramic tile, it will damage the water resistant layer of the tile. So what we do is etching. If you guys have watched my laser engraving glass video, I have explained that white paint will reflect blue laser beams and will not transfer the heat to the surface. So why do we use white paint then? One of the major constituents of most white paints is titanium dioxide which gives it its white color. Titanium dioxide has two structural forms, anatase and rutile. When it's in the paint, it's in the anatase form and when you laser it, the titanium dioxide molecules undergo a structural change and become rutile. Under the laser, the rutile structure becomes black in color and bonds permanently with the molecules on the surface of the tile. So that's why we use white paint. Now onto what can go wrong. The first mistake you can make is in selecting the tile. Make sure you go for a tile that has a perfect white color. Do not get a tile that has an off-white appearance. If you get a tile with an off-white appearance, you will not get that perfect grayscale that you are looking for. Your engravings will look dull. Also, when you get a new batch of tiles, run a test to see if your settings work. Tiles from different manufacturers can have different top finishes which can affect the way the paint bonds with the surface. So, it's a good idea to run a test whenever you change the type of tile that you are using. The second thing is the choice of paint. Try to get a paint that has good concentration of titanium dioxide which means most white spray paints or automotive white paint. Try to avoid paints like tempera. You should also make sure the thickness of your coat is the same over the entire surface. Also, if you change your paint, run some tests. The way you coat your tile can also affect your speed and power setting and your engraving. I engraved the same image using the same setting on a tile coated with spray paint and on one where I used the roller. This is what I got. This one I engraved using spray paint and for this one I used the roller. The one I did using the spray paint came out better. So that's how you engrave ceramic tile on a diode laser. If you think the video was good, click that like button. If it wasn't, you could click the unlike button. I'll be sharing project ideas and posting videos regularly now. Also, I will soon upload a video on color engraving ceramic tiles. So I suggest you hit that subscribe button to learn some cool tips and tricks about laser engraving. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.